in the interview with Rock Bottom, YouTube channel and uh, radio show. Yeah, Francis Rossi, lead guitarist and singer yeah, for Status Quo and his partner, rhythm guitar player Richie Malone. Nice to have you in this interview. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. have a man with the same hair, Jason. We have the same hair, the same, don't you? Yeah, and the same colour. Yeah. Well, mine's a little worse than yours, greyer than yours, I think. It's, this bit here is, yeah. yours is natural, mine comes from here. Yeah. Anyway, about <laughs> music, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we were on tour recently, so how were the reactions with, yeah, of the fans on your new lineup, the first tour, I guess, without well, Rick? With respect, we cannot be saying they're shit reactions. We're nice. bound to say they're great reactions, but they've been great reactions. <laughs> no, but there are some fans that write to us, don't like the idea that we still exist or I still exist. They don't like the idea that Rich is in the band. They don't like the idea that John Edwards is in the band. They don't like the idea that the band has a keyboard player. So the best thing they've done for us is to make me think <laughs> I'm going to continue then because mm, yeah. it seems against the grain. But your question was what's the reaction like the reaction thus far has been really good we have not been booed off once have we no nearly though no. nearly mm, i don't think so not nearly no not no. at all no he thinks i'm serious but there we go i'll leave yeah. that one <laughs> yes yeah, you okay. will release a new album backbone on the 6th september so um there are why did you release the album after the tour? Normally an album is released and then the tour starts. Because as you said, normally. We're trying not to be normally. Yeah. Um, we don't look like a normal rock band. I noticed that someone mentioned we did a TV the other day that we weren't dressed like a rock band. That's good. Um, I don't have a ponytail. That's good. Uh, anything that's a bit different to me at the present is yeah. good. Mm. And if we tour uh, this one, that's the normal. And something in me at the moment feels rebellious because, as I said, um, we're fighting against people that don't want us to be here. <laughs> so that's kind of made it more. Um, when Rick and I tried to continue, or did continue, without Alan Lancaster and John Coughlin, people said we shouldn't do it, it was rubbish, it was crap. But they made Rick and I fight. So all those kind of people have done to us at the moment is make it really tight as a band. It's a very tight team and it's very defensive of itself. Uh -huh. And it, it was going to continue. <laughs> yeah, Backbone, yeah, yeah, it sounds fresh and vivid. And yeah, what? it's the first vivid. album, yeah. Without vivid. vivid. Oh, vivid. Sorry. Vivid. Yeah, the band is vivid. It's the first album without Rick. Mm. So how hard was it to create new music yeah, without him? It's very strange that uh, there were various albums that Rick wasn't on over the years because of his condition at times, and he was put on afterwards. So it doesn't say too much for the rest of us to think. Was it hard to do it without Rick? Well, no, because we're all players. We all record. I've always I record anyway and stuff. Um, if you say, did we miss Rick? Well, of course we missed him initially when he died and initially when he retired and initially when Richie began. Of course you missed it. I mean, uh, I miss my parents, they're dead. It would be funny if I didn't miss them. They're not there. Rick's not here. Did we find it difficult? Not particularly, no. We, you, that's one of the things about life. When Rick died, he, he actually died first in uh, Turkey. Mm -hmm. The difficult point when they took him away in the ambulance in, in June or July, whenever it was, was going back downstairs through the hotel and people were having a drink in the bar and some people sat in the restaurant and people were checking in at the hotel and life was going on. That was the most difficult moment, to be really honest. The rest of the time after that, you realise that you have to go on. Yeah, and so course. we did. You need to jump in at some fucking stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. Chat or what? I'm on here too. You, you, you look good, though, don't you? I think so. Well, the shirt, I think it's the shirt. It's the shirt, 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 of course. It's lovely. Which you did you have the uh, yeah, opportunity to bring in your own ideas on the recording process and writing process? Yeah. Um, for Backbone, I've put forward uh, two tracks. Uh, one is on the album, and the second track is like is a bonus track for like a deluxe edition. So. Francis gave us all our own time to put forward whatever we have um, in the recording lovely. process, you know, so 
he's lovely. He, I was at home and he was, he would call and text, have you anything for me? Have you anything for me? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I say, yeah, I'll have something soon, don't worry. But I was, you know, it gave everybody a chance to put something forward. So uh, what I put forward, thankfully, you know, it's been good content, as was Leon's, as was uh, John's and Andrew's. Everyone's content put forward has been really strong for the album. Mm -hmm. So I think it made that process probably a slight bit easier than having to pick and choose, you know. And uh, did did you have the, did you bring in the fourth chord to your music? Because I think that's a joke. In 2007, you had an album yeah, in search for the yeah. fourth Still chord. Still in search so of did it. You, Did you achieve this goal? Did you bring in the I'm fourth? Again, I'm, I try every now and again to bring a new <laughs> chord in, but I... You're yeah. going to learn that fourth one, aren't you? <laughs> I've learned a diminished one. Oh, really? Which I only use in one song. Do you? But I didn't bring it in. No, 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 no. no. I'll save it till later yeah, on. Yeah, mm. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And, and was it a hard task to yeah, learn all these songs and appear on Rick's role and yeah. take it over? Is it a hard task? The, the initial... The, when I was practicing at home when I first got the call I was I was going over to set three hours a day for two weeks at home to try and get up because it's one thing knowing the song but the next thing is having to play it at that level yeah. with the in-ear system with the click tracks um, and to make sure that you don't overstep the mark and make sure wherever you stand on stage you, you know you can't go up and impersonate someone that's been there before it would look ridiculous so a lot of time and effort went into getting it even to the starting point that was the starting point for me that first rehearsal so oh, yeah. i look back then and i think i, I find it too difficult to watch compared to how the band has evolved three years later mm. 140 shows or 150 shows later we're, st we're still working on it we're still evolving i think you know? and still haven't used the fourth chord no 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 we will bring that in that's some. where the real money is I think. <laughs> that's where the real money is yeah, a big yeah. time in the fourth chord that dave cave knows if you yeah, dave cave course. knows yeah. them all yeah and um, is it a different situation now because the rich is much younger than most uh, than the most of the people in the band 65. i guess <laughs> 65 why, why so, is it so is it much more difficult because No, because did it change the chemistry in the band? Yes, it did. Because yes, such a young and, guy. And that's part of the whole thing. That I said, people, some people don't like the idea. The initial thing when Richie first did his shows, I think within four shows it was. I said to him, "You'll be fine." The four, sh the first four shows were like a new guy on the stage, <laughs> and after the first four shows, you'll be fine. You develop your own thing. You do your thing. Don't do this, don't do that, anything that tries to copy, that's ridiculous. And then he would he would play the songs and then the rest of us it wasn't the rest of us sat down and realised, but you we all realised that he played the songs as they were he learned them from the initial records, that how he played them, and that's how they were in his memory. Hmm. We had perhaps as a band become complacent or blase about playing generally. And lots of the dynamics, the light and shade in the songs had gone. And that's one of the things that has come back in spades, so to speak. Can you say that anymore? Which? In spades. In spades. You just did, didn't you? Yeah. I'm just checking. Oh, yeah. And so oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. you can't say that. No? No. So we're three of us going to be in trouble. Yeah. And so it, it came back big time that the when we're on stage, the dynamics of each song. So that's... <laughs> So that's, um, you can see on the band, in the band each night, that, that we are actually looking at each other's eye contact because you can't be sure where, it, there's a, like a look to see that perhaps it's going to drop there or it's going to, and that is um, a real joy. Mm. And I can't help it that people don't like that I'm enjoying myself. I no, am it's, enjoying I like it. I like this idea, but it was my question if that, if it fits. Well, of course, it does, I I well, otherwise I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have done the album, but I didn't think that was fit. No, no, of course, fit. of course, because mm. he's much younger. This was my idea, but it's a very good idea. I like the album. Don't keep mm. saying the much younger. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit. Okay, okay. 30 and the rest. Okay, good. Yeah.
He's a tiny bit younger. A tiny bit younger. Really half his age. Sick yeah. bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that, either. Half his age. Yeah. I'm so, half his age, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And does the album title Backbone refer on the situation of status quo? Should it mean never give up, show your backbones, backbone, stand your ground? Yes, I would think so. It's very much something that when John and I were writing the thing and John took it away to try and uh, put the thing together before he sent it back to me, that I'm sure that sound came out of uh, 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 and it's when you're going uh, 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 and he, it obviously came to him backbone uh, or maybe it came to him before that I don't know you possibly have to ask John Edwards if we ever get him in a room it's dangerous to allow him into a room he breaks things I think that tripod, yeah, that tripod would around. be gone and um, but yeah, I'm sure he feels that somewhat about the way the band is and the, way the position it's in. And it also relates to life generally, I think, that, you know, mm -hmm. you, you said you've got to have backbones and live your life the way that you want to do. And he is a bit like that. He's going to do his thing, whatever happens, which is why he's just been sacked from the band, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Minutes ago. <laughs> Minutes ago. Yeah. Would you phone him and tell him he's sacked? Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. And how do you find the subjects for your lyrics generally? What's your inspiration for your lyrics? Depends on each thing. I, I'm not sure what Richie did. When Bob and I were writing um, Waiting for a Woman, it was inspired by being out one day on tour. Andrew and I were out with our PA in Sheffield, I think. And, I stood, and she went in the shop and him and I stood there and a, a guy asked me if I was waiting for my wife. I said my wife wouldn't leave me standing outside a shop. But, <laughs> but it made me realise that every man knows what that's about yeah. and it's a bit of a contentious subject in the present the, the climate the way the world is which made it a little bit braver and bob and i both sat there and said yeah it's good the idea that so many guys if you go to the mall or the galleria in town you see guys standing there just waiting thinking where the fuck are those my fucking I'm not, coming, I'm not coming out here with her again and you do every week and so and that's one of inspiration. There was another one for Bob and I, I want to run away with you. I got the title of I want to run away with you for the chorus or the opening line. And the song is about a friend of ours that we knew that went to Australia from Ireland because there was a Catholic and a Protestant marriage and they thought they would be, get away from the problems in Ireland and that would be mm -hmm. gone in Australia. And it wasn't, it's still there. Um, so yeah, there, there's the inspiration it's funny when you say inspiration, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, quite yeah. like that, you know, you it could be anything. Well, go on, what did you? For, for my, uh, for get out of my head, it's funny how music affects people because <laughs> I wrote it about a typical boy meets girl. Um, I find it's easy to write about like a love type story. And then, you know, he gives everything up for her and she runs away and it's all like get out of my head she's driving me crazy I've, you know yeah. so I thought it kind of nearly, it nearly wrote itself and then a few weeks ago I was out having dinner with my partner and she, we were talking about it and she thought the song was about drugs uh, yeah. I was like what? I so just thought it was about drugs yeah, really? get out of my head my, an, an urge for, for drugs or something ah. like that and that's incredible how music affects people like that they have no it has to be about this and, and I said no it's actually about that <laughs> and, this, and the same with, with Face the Music. Um, Face the Music is, is, is quite personal, but it's about two best mates, childhood friends. Um, one has gone that way and one has gone that way and they're too stubborn. Um, and I know, again, the partner had said, you know, Quo fans might interpret that to be about Francis and Rick. I was like, mm -hmm. it had nothing got to do with yeah, it whatsoever. Um, but um, people will get their own thing about it, you know? I see you're in some trouble, a song of mine and Bob's. Yeah. Bob got the last year you're in the trouble, da, da. and that's what we sit with a little, yeah, okay, good, yeah, see, so mm. we start there. It could be hours, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a title you now. can't, you look to me for help, yeah, good. Uh, I want, and uh, I want butter with yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, but um, a lot of people said, is that about Rick? What? Yeah. Why would you think that? That's what people yeah. would think. Yeah. But if Some they think that, it's what goes in in one's head, and I. Uh, I know Pink Floyd had this sort of years ago that they had so many, they were working somewhere, somebody I knew was working with them. And somebody said, well, what does that mean? And, and Walter said, well, I don't know, they'll make something of it. Yeah. <laughs> and you and we do, and that is possibly the magic, magic of music anyway. I don't, 
it's it's in the it's in the head of someone else. What do you think it is? Then that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's always you uh, allow it to be eye of the beholder. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Or, or the listener. And yeah. The, yeah. Yes, of course. And um, yeah, um, when this album will is released, will you go on tour again? Do you plan a backbone tour? Or when will this tour? That, be uh, that's if that's going to happen. It's going to happen next winter, next autumn. Um, I'm going to get three more songs in, so that will give five songs from the new album. But I've got to live that long first, and um, everyone's got my. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, I may I laugh, but it do, it can happen. It could happen. But that's the idea, and I said we're, we're trying to break the mold a little bit at the moment, in in, in lots of things that we do, rather than uh, we we haven't been doing encores. And a guy came to see um, where are we Hamburg, mm. the Stadt Park here in yeah. Hamburg. And we spoke to him yesterday and he said, but it is customary to do an encore. I said, that's the reason we're not doing it. It has to be earned. An encore was always something when we were yeah, younger. Yeah, that yeah, you, yeah, we got an encore, fantastic. Well, not now. It's on every, any band you see, the set list, it's got encore. Yeah. We've got, how do you know you've got one? Everyone just writes in the you know, and that bothers me a little. And since we've made, sorry, since we've made it, it might, might be, it might not. Now, the audience, if we come back on, which we've done a few, they're going, yeah, they're actually, oh, good, you did come back on, rather than, yeah, they'll be back on, just give it, yeah, they'll be back on in a minute. And that wasn't feeling good. So were you discontented with the gig in Hamburg so that you didn't play it on? No, not at all. So we have made a decision at that point. I said, look, we're not going to do the encore for a while. Let's see what the fuck happens. Yeah, yeah. And by the time we were, we were gone and the people were still, we were told the following day. And John and Andrew, were, uh, people booed. And I said, but they weren't booing the performance. They were booing the fact that we didn't come back on. So that's good. Oh, you didn't come back on. No, we didn't. Hmm. And now people, I think they're thinking about it. I think our entire industry should think about it. An encore should not be just... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's just not just happened. as everybody expects, it's something special or should be something special. I and, think so, yeah. yeah. That's how it started, so it'd be nice to go back <laughs> yes. to that. Yeah. Some bands don't play encores, for example, Black Label Society, two hour set, Fine. finish. I think that's a good idea, too. We're finished. Yeah. Thank you. It's, I do. It's a good, good idea. And sometimes, let's, think, let's face it, you get to that peak, you build that, you know, the performance is building to that last number. Yeah, fantastic. And then you come back on and you think, <laughs> shouldn't have done that. You lost it. Yeah, you yeah. lost the audience, you lost the vibe. Mm. Yes, and yeah, um, and yeah, um, you have had a reunion with the original line up as a frantic for in 2013 2014 so how is your relationship to alan lancaster and john cuckland today or would you describe not it? not what it should be perhaps um i fell out with alan again he was very upset i didn't want to do the frantics anymore i just didn't want to do the frantics anymore so you are more i don't contented. want to do on calls at the moment no one's going to kill me <laughs> alan was very very upset and we, we used to um, facetime a lot and it was the Christmas, I think, of the... When did you say we did those? 2013? 14, yeah. So probably at the end of 14, and it was Christmas, and, and he was insulting a bit. So I just... Oh, and I just... And we haven't spoken since. Oh. It's sad, but that's how it is. So, th so there will be no chance that he will guest in the current line-up? What? As a guest musician. No, I don't, I don't want the band, or we don't want the band, as much as I, I am part of that 70s with Alan and yeah. John. But that's then, I can't, I don't okay, want to live then. I, like, I want now. And that's where to, for us to be guesting like that would be oh, a bit smelly. Yeah, it's okay if it's your decision, I can understand. No, that. I'm just telling you, I want it to be about, about now. No, it's, it's a about current now. time and not yes. past tense. In another 20 years, I'll start talking about the past again. <laughs> Fuck. That was a tall order, wasn't it? You wearing diapers. <laughs> Should be. <now>. Yeah. <laughs> and how yeah. would you see your fans today? Um, are these more the older guys from the seventies, or do you have young fans? Maybe the children. Of I think we've lost a lot of the guys from the seventies from rocking mm. all over the world. Definitely, we lost a lot from uh, in the army. We lost a lot, and from Margarita, we lost a lot. 
and a lot of those came back to see the frantic four but they didn't the second time so yeah, there was a clue there and we have definitely got newer fans recently whether it's because of so that red shirt uh, oh, yeah. probably it's the shirt I think it's a very attractive shirt <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is but again it's a bit weird for a band of our age to be saying oh young people are coming to see us as though no. that validates us mm. no I'm just saying I'm not saying you said that so you may carry on talk no, I, I definitely have seen it I've been on the other side of the barrier and since I've come into the band the amount of young kids down the front is it's incredible because they're coming with their uh, with their parents and their grandparents, you know. You care about the women. That's it. You care about their yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's, there's there's a few uh, down the front here and there. Uh, not allowed to talk about that. Aren't you? Somebody threw a bra up on stage. Recently. Oh, that was the first. Jessica, uh, you listening, Jess? Um, no, but I there are a variety of, and it always has been uh, the age span for quo fans is That's from so young to, yeah, yeah it's huge it's and so it's really fucking good. old <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> young too old <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but that's another thing that seems to me with the last 30 years everyone tries to validate themselves by saying yes young people come to see us as so though what's wrong with old people they're just young people that grew up look at you and our hair look yeah. you and me we grew up and yeah. something grew away you should see his hair it's worse than mine <laughs> and um yeah um do you have favorite markets favorite countries to tour deutschland deutschland, deutschland of course no seriously i yeah. mean you might, that we've that's been documented for years and years that we love being in germany but yeah. i love being in germany particularly in the winter mm -hmm. oh yeah it's just I don't know I, I, I go shopping this is German <laughs> this is Germany but this is Germany socks in Germany the only thing I put in England is shoes and they're 15 years old so Andrew and I love shopping and we all love being in Deutschland mm. it's not like the Americans come in and say we love your country hi England shit it's Germany <laughs> no we like it mm -hmm. yeah that sounds good Frikadella, and what's the situation the United rock States first, I heard that's hard first. for rock bands to yeah, gain success in the United States that it's stopped many years ago us trying to do that was we, we wasted a lot of money trying to chase the American dollar and I think Rick and I would have got into more drugs mm. and uh, probably killed ourselves so the thing of chasing the American dollar stopped a long long time ago I just we could go back if you want you just look at your face you and Cave trying to get me to go to Mexico and wherever else. I'm going to Mexico for the breakfast. Australia. Okay. Yeah, we're Australian breakfast, isn't it? Australian Uncle breakfast. Jack's. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Short question for the uh, last question. Could, mm -hmm. could you name the highs and lows in your very long career? Is it possible to name mm. highlights or maybe low points for you? Points, plural, perhaps, yes. Singular, no. Uh, obviously, uh, Live Aid, uh, the first hits, the first number one albums. Uh, the albums going at the number one all the time uh, doing the cover albums was a low point the early period of um, us trying to find our way after in the army that yeah. noise that just came out of my stomach um, <laughs> that was a low point that was a low point <laughs> yeah so I mean I, I find it difficult that when they ask for low points high points favourite song favourite yeah, movie I understand I, I have one favourite song, one high point, and it was. A, we were talking yesterday about Wacken. The trouble is with those big gigs, Wacken or Glastonbury, Glastonbury yeah. and the other one, the, the prison, Alcatraz. The, Alcatraz. Alcatraz. They're already he's favourite. Oh, are you going to do something special? Well, what's the matter with the park in Hamburg? You mean why isn't that special? And uh, we did uh, Wacken. It was very successful. And I think the following day we went to a place called Ritterhude. Never been to it in our lives. Probably four to five thousand people, a small area, a drizzly day. It wasn't very good, very difficult to get. Everything was wrong. Mm -hmm. Best gig I can remember for a long time. So it's usually the little insignificant places <laughs> that the best things happen. Mm -hmm. Whereas journalism and the, and the media, they want you to say, oh, Glastonbury. Oh. Yeah, Glastonbury yeah. was very ordinary to me. It just brought a gig. And then guess what? We had to do a gig the following day. Yeah. It's, it's just another gig, all of it. And they, they think I'm being grumpy. No, I'm not. It's just another gig. Mm. Okay. 
Yeah, Francis and Richie, thank you very much for this nice interview. I know I've got a terrible German accent, everybody tells me, and it's always mentioned on the videos and the yeah, notes. But thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. keep on rocking. Thank you. Take thank care. You. It's got a lovely accent. <laughs>